Welcome to Finding Forgiveness, a Fraser 365 devotional. I'm Chris Montgomery, the senior pastor at Fraser Church, and we're excited you've joined us for this study. May the Lord bless you as we learn about His forgiveness. Today is day seven of Finding Forgiveness. Our title today is Enslaved. In Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis said, Everyone says forgiveness is a lovely idea until they have something to forgive. Our text today is Genesis 37, 25 through 28. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels bearing gum, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it? If we kill our brother and conceal his blood, come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, our own flesh, and his brothers listened to him. Then Midianite traders passed by, and they drew Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty shekels of silver. They took Joseph to Egypt. Genesis 37:25 is not what one would guess would come next in the story. Then they sat down to eat. The brothers have just stripped the robe from Joseph's body and thrown him into a cistern. Then they eat a meal while he begs for his life. Can you think of anything so callous? Their hatred and jealousy have grown to such an extent that they show no remorse for their sins. This is akin to someone murdering a family member today and stopping to grab something to eat before they dispose of the body. How can you stomach such a sin? Prolonged anger leads to hard-heartedness. When sin grows to the extent that you have lost your conscience, you are in deep trouble spiritually. You may ask, how do you know Joseph is begging for his life while they eat? The answer is a hint found later in the story. In Genesis 42, Joseph will test his brothers by calling them spies and putting them in jail for three days. He will require them to send for their youngest brother to verify they are telling him the truth. In that scenario, you will find the brothers talking to one another about their sin against Joseph. Notice the interesting description in Genesis 42:21. Then they said to one another, In truth, we are guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the distress of his soul when he begged us, and we did not listen. That is why this distress has come upon us. He begged us, and we did not listen. Many scholars believe that they heard him begging from the cistern while they were eating, and they can't forget this detail as they are having to live with this sin. Little did anyone know when they would all eat together again in Joseph's presence. It would be years later when they were in Egypt with Joseph at the head of the table. This later meal is described in Genesis 43, verses 33 through 34. It reads, And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked at one another in amazement. Portions were taken to them from Joseph's table, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs, and they drank and were merry with him. They will be eating in birth order with Joseph sitting in the front of them all, but at this point in the story, Joseph is in a dry well begging for his life, while his brothers are eating a meal with an earshot of his pleas for help. Scripture details for us what happens next. A group of travelers pass by. Scripture calls them by two different names, Ishmaelites and Midianites. The NIV application commentary on Genesis explains the connection between these two names. It says, This caravan is made up of Midianites and Ishmaelites. Midianites are descendants of Abraham through Keturah, while the Ishmaelites descended from Abraham through Hagar. So these are kinfolk. 
the ancestors of these two peoples were half-brothers to one another, and to Isaac, and so uncles to Jacob. Therefore, these traitors are second or third cousins to Joseph and his brothers. It's not unusual to find the two clans together, since both occupied the Arabian desert region. Most commentators considered Midianite and Ishmaelite as a variant term for the same group. Therefore, these sojourners could be kin to Joseph and his brothers. The brothers sell Joseph into slavery for 20 shekels of silver. The NLT says they sold Joseph for 20 pieces of silver. This reminds me of another section of scripture, Matthew 26, 14 through 16. It reads, Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment, he sought an opportunity to betray him. Both Joseph and Jesus were sold by people extremely close to them. Joseph was sold for twenty pieces of silver, and Jesus betrayed for thirty pieces of silver. Silver was a symbol of atonement and redemption. In Exodus thirty fifteen through 16 we discover that it was an offering for atonement. It reads, The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less, than the half shekel when you give to the Lord's offering to make atonement for your lives. You shall take the atonement money from the people of Israel, and shall give it for the service of the tent of meeting, that it may bring the people of Israel to remembrance before the Lord, so as to make atonement for your lives. Thus, both Joseph and Jesus will be sold with shekels of silver that symbolize redemption. Redemption can be defined as the act of saving, purchased through payment, Joseph will be positioned by God to save his family, and Jesus was sent by God to save the world. It will cost Joseph slavery and suffering. It will cost Jesus immense suffering on a cross and his death for the payment of our sins. Victor Hamilton provides deeper insight into the sale of Joseph for 20 pieces of silver. He says, Joseph's sale for 20 shekels fits perfectly with the amount a man was to give to the sanctuary if he vows himself or one of his male relatives between the ages of 5 and 20 to the Lord. So, 20 pieces of silver was the price you would pay for a male between the ages of 5 to 25 when you committed that person to the Lord. I don't believe that Joseph's brothers were committing him to the Lord. However, I strongly believe that our Lord was committed to Joseph. Consider these questions. In what ways has your heart been hardened through prolonged anger? How is your heart in danger of a flippant attitude toward sin? How have you been betrayed and spiritually enslaved by someone close to you? What actions can you take in finding forgiveness to be set free? What are your thoughts about the continual similarities between Joseph and Jesus? How do the sufferings of Joseph point you to the sacrifice of Jesus? Pray with me. Lord, thank you for your sacrifice. May we not take it for granted today as we walk with you. Amen. Amen.